I'm going to show you seven silent UI hacks that web designers use to make more attractive looking web designs. The first is an inspiration board. It's something you can create before designing a website where you take pictures of dozens or even hundreds of other sites. After that, I head to Figma and paste them all, kind of like one big brainstorm. And this helps me create the design for the website I'm building. Because one quote that's famous in the design world is that good designers copy and great designers steal. And one thing you can be certain of is that you'll never hear me saying I copied a website, but I've definitely taken inspiration from quite a few. Another thing that designers might not mention is that every font is unique, just like a snowflake. I'm special! Rather than just going with the popular Roboto or intern fonts, it's important to pick a custom font for your web designer that suits the look and feel for a site. Because at the end of the day, most people go onto a website to read text, except for those people who mindlessly scroll through Insta. And this is why one of the very first steps before even doing a web design is creating a style guide with topography in mind. And while your client might not understand it at all and you'll have to explain it to them like they're five, deep down inside, you know you've done a good job. Next is to understand what that font looks like on the website. This means adjusting it for its paragraphs and headings. Never ever use the default line height provided by the browser or framework. On Chrome, the default line height is 1.2, but this isn't an ideal option. While some tools like Tailwind CSS provide a preset line height, which is 1.5, every font works a little bit different with its natural line height and what you should use. I used to find this confusing, kind of like finding matching socks, but I've got a tip to make this work. If you aren't sure, begin in the golden zone between 1.25 and 1.5. Then just keep adjusting it until it feels right. For headings, font kerneling is one of the best ways to ensure that your titles look powerful and condensed. It's adjusting the space between letters. While most letters look great, once you increase their size, the space between the letters also increases. This often feels unnatural, just like me if I'm wearing a t-shirt that's too big. So just like with line height, you need to adjust the font kerneling for each font differently. It's important to consider how much you want to adjust it depending on what font you're using. I usually go between negative 1 to negative 5% so that the letters are close but not touching. Next, we have font pairings, which can elevate your web design, giving it a more dynamic style. A font pair is when you have two different fonts for the heading and the paragraph text. The two fonts need to have a healthy relationship, almost like they're dating each other, which means they should kind of look similar but different. While this sounds like a contradiction, when it's done right, it looks beautiful. If you find it hard to find the right pair, then try the website fontpair.co. All right, now let's move on to colors. One tricky part of creating a web design is picking the right color to use. Some color palettes are defined by the logo of a business and sometimes, actually most times, they're terrible because good graphics design changes almost as fast as Gen Z slang. And what slays today might not in a decade, which is often how long a business has been around for. So it's up to graphics designers to pick a good combination of colors to use for a website. But if you're not a designer just yet, let me show you some tricks that work. One design hack I've learned over the years is to never go full saturation. While it can look vibrant, almost always it'll cause eye strain for anyone looking at it for too long. And it can take away focus of other elements on the page. Instead, you'll want to use a safe zone of colors. If you've used a color picker before, it's this safe range just here. This inner part has more shade, tint and tone, and it means that the color isn't as harsh as some of the options around the corner. And if you're still having trouble, I've always found the colors from Tailwind CSS a good resource to use. So you have one color, but that's not enough. A good design always has a few different colors, a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary color. It's time to create some color pairs, and there's a trick to it. Designers use color theory to pick things like analogous or complementary colors, and there's a few handy tools that let you do this online. My favorite is Adobe Color, but there's also Ava Design System as well as Pelotone. And using resources like this also helps in other ways, such as creating gradients or radial auroras, which are all the hype these days. If your website doesn't have one of these floating circle gradients in the background, was it really designed in 2024? Finally is micro animation. It might not seem like much, but there are subtle bits of animation that a designer can add to a page that makes it feel more alive. This can include things like having half a second of animation when you load the page, or a small transition when you're resizing the window, or just a scroll in animation when you're scrolling up and down. While such movement is often made to be very subtle, it creates the perception of a higher quality website. And these days, it's easier than ever to add such features in. 